Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness and today I'm going to be talking about a new box that I got for my sewing machine feet. I have another Minikin Season 2 preview for you. I added some new Harry Potter fabrics to my stash. I have new acrylic templates in the shop to share with you. The book review for this week will be a Stitch in Time English paper piecing. I have a Tudor Bag Sew Along wrap up for you and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me and spending your Sunday with me on Social Sunday. Hi to Diana from Florida. Hello, uh, Kadeen from New York, Anna from Virginia, and Melba from Georgia. So thanks everybody so much for joining me. And as always, Danny and I really enjoy watching the chatter on Facebook and YouTube before we get started. Um, sometimes we sit here as long as an hour before the show and just watch all the comments come through. So thanks so much for being a participant in the bag making community and jumping on on the show a little bit early so that you can chat with your fellow bag makers. So just a friendly reminder, nearly everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also a reminder, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, projects, or books that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find more there. So um, as always, my favorite portion of the show is the notion of the week and I added a new storage box to my sewing room. I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and share it with you. It is a box by Noble Notions and it's made specifically for holding sewing machine presser feet. So um, this is what it looks like on the outside. Obviously it's got a lid and I left all of the paperwork that came with it in the case just so that you can see what it comes with. So it's got these little cardstock labels that it comes with and there's foam in the bottom of the case and as you can see from this illustration there's cutouts in the foam for slots for your feet and also slots for um, the little cardstock where you can write the names of all of your feet. So here's a few of my feet in the storage box. As you can see, this is where the cutouts for the foam are. And I like how they hold the feet. This is how I decided to put mine inside so that I could see the bottoms of the feet at least. Um, at first glance, I can immediately tell that this is my Teflon foot because of how the bottom looks. This is a put foot for installing piping. I've got my walking foot here. I actually, even though I use a Juki, I actually have a Janome walking foot because the walking foot that came with my Juki was pretty loud and clangy. And I heard some advice online about getting the Janome walking foot. So I did and it's much quieter. So I'm really happy with that. I've got a couple of zipper feet in here and um, this is the box. So I previously used just a plastic uh, container with a lid for the feet and they just kind of jangled around in there. But I kind of like the idea of this storage box. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, this is just something brand new that I just got that I added to my stash. The company that makes this box again is called Noble Notions. And this is a um, stacking box for presser feet. And I have to show you, um, I also have a box for my bobbins that I've used. And because these are stacking boxes, they're the same size and I can keep them in my sewing room. Um, and just handy storage. So um, I can also take the lid off of one of these if I wanted these to be completely stacking because there's cutouts on the bottom of each one. And then I can have them be completely stacking if I wanted to. All right, so let's get right to it. Another Minikin season two preview. I think I only have two left to show you after tonight. So tonight's preview project is called the Metro Double Zip Pouch. So this comes in three different sizes. This is size medium. I wanted to add a wristlet strap here just because I don't have a lot of patterns that do have a wristlet strap and I like adding features that you can take and use in other bags. Um, this, uh, I think I already said this is size medium, but it's got the two zippers on it. And I oriented the zipper heads to go in opposite directions, but you could certainly have them in the same directions if you'd like. And each compartment is fully lined. so. As you can see, my bright pop of blue, uh, pastel blue in the lining fabric. So again, this is the Metro Double Zip Pouch. 
This uses all shape flex interfacing, so not a lot of heavy duty interfacing in this one, and you could certainly leave off the wrist strap if you wanted to. All right, Danny's favorite part of the show as always, let us know in the comments. Um, go ahead and type bag lady or bag dude in the comments right now. And we love to see the supportive bag making community. I know a lot of state and country meetups have been going on and Danny and I have certainly enjoyed throughout the month of October having live video conference calls with you while you have your meetups and that's been a lot of fun with us. Um, so thanks again for being part of the community. Um, new fabrics in my stash this week. I added some new fabrics uh, with a Harry Potter theme. You may already know that I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and I'm super looking forward to the new Fantastic Beasts movie coming out next month. But again, I'm gonna pop over to that side camera again and show you the new fabrics that I got. Okay, so the first fabric in the bunch is a Slytherin fabric and this is minky fabric. And this one I believe is called a blanket topper. So it's got this really large Slytherin print on one half of the fabric and then the other half of the fabric is, let me position it the correct way, is a Slytherin themed smaller print. So you can cut these up and use them in two different projects or you can use the blanket topper on one side of the, this little blanket and I would say it would be a, a really cute toddler or crib blanket and then the other side is Slytherin and it's super soft fabric. Um, I got another minky print. Um, this one is Ravenclaw, so obviously I got all the different houses um, portrayed as fabrics. And there's Luna Love Lovegood's uh, glasses right there. All right, here's another one from Hufflepuff. And then, of course, my favorite is Gryffindor, and this one's a knit fabric. Um, I'm not worried about using knits for a bag if I had to. Uh, my advice for using knits in a bag is just to stabilize the stretchy knit with Pelon Shape Flex first to take out the stretch, and then you can use it per the pattern, uh, whether you're attaching foam interfacing or whatever else the pattern calls for. So I got a yard of each of these. They're going in my stash, but I might use that Harry Potter one soon, um, this one in particular for the Gryffindor house. Okay, so I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Did you read the Harry Potter books? I know they came out quite some time ago, but I like to reread them every few years. And I've also started reading um, the Cormoran, Cormoran Strike series, which is another series written by J.K. Rowling, but under the pseudonym of Robert, Robert Galbraith. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. So I am a huge J.K. Rowling fan and um, I really love books that kind of transport you and take you into another world and the Harry Potter books definitely do that for me. So um, new other new things that we've added recently, I promised last Sunday as soon as we got some of the new acrylic templates to share those with you on the show. And we have three templates in just now. We have the Annex Double Zip Box Pouch, the Renegade Bag, and Crimson and Clover. So. Annex Double Zip Box Pouch um, comes with two templates and there's three different sizes. We decided to sell this one um, separate by size just because of the cost of the templates because they're kind of bigger templates. So we do have these listed as separately, small, medium, and large. Um, Crimson and Clover is another one. Um, all three sizes are included in this particular uh, set of templates. And then the Renegade Bag, which we had a lot of requests for. So the Renegade Bag just has the two templates one for the main panel and one for the accent that's on the front of the bag and that's actually the bag uh, right behind me in the red and white. So um, if you like templates, um, if you make the same bag or pouch a lot of a lot of times in a row, like I remember, uh, I think, what was it, Tuesday, somebody made 180 of the cotton candy pouches. So I hope that person has a template because that would certainly come in handy for uh, making so many of the same project. I also had a request last week for showing my New York Beauty bag that I self-drafted uh, probably seven years ago. And um, as luck would have it, right before the show, I went down to the basement to look for that bag because I thought in my mind's eye that I knew where it was. And I couldn't find it because of course um, it figures. I do have photos of that bag that I took uh, when I made it seven years ago-ish at the time. So Danny's gonna put those photos up on the screen for me, for me right now. Here's an example of a bag made with a quilt block. So. Oh, sorry about the quickness of the photos. Um, uh, this is two New York Beauty blocks that I made, uh, one for the front, one for the back. I believe they were either, 
uh, I want to say 16 inches finished black and I just self drafted sort of like a market tote and I, I bound the side edges of the bag so um, if I find the bag I'll show you the bag in person but hopefully these photos will do for now um, and thanks for always requesting different things either demonstrations or for me to show different projects it really helps me fill fill out the show and it recalls to my mind things that I haven't made in some time for example that bag I made must have made about seven years ago I made it to take along to a trade show and I wanted something that would show off um, a different side besides bag making being the foundation paper piece block but I also wanted it to hold a lot of stuff so it's a really decently sized bag I didn't ever make it into a pattern but um, maybe one day I will I don't know I know sometimes binding scares people off um, but let me know in the comments I have another question for you um, have you ever used quilt blocks for other projects um, like for example my bag have you ever used a quilt block for a bag or a pouch or have you ever used a quilt block for some other purpose? So let me know in the comments if you have. I'm sure bags would be one of the most common purposes for repurposing quilt blocks, but let me know what other things you've been using them for as well. I'm really curious to find out about that. All right, I do actually have a book review for this week. I got a new book in called A Stitch in Time English Paper Piecing, and I am a big fan of both foundation paper piecing and English paper piecing, and the projects in this book were were really super cute and I found didn't need um, the time um, suck of a huge project like a quilt. So a lot of the projects in the book are smaller projects where you can just make a block or two. And uh, let me pop over to the side camera and show you what this book is all about. All right, so here's the book. It's by Sharon Burgess and it's called A Stitch in Time English Paper Piecing. And there's 18 projects in the book and um, a little uh, secret that's my favorite project in the book right there I love this one and that's probably the one that I'm gonna make first so as with most books there are techniques in the front of the book for uh, whatever the purpose of the book is so um, here's a quick sneak peek at all the projects in the book but it talks about English paper piecing what materials you'll need and how exactly to English paper piece if you're new to doing English paper piecing so creating templates, uh, using Quilter's Template Plastic, which I do, it's great for fussy cutting. Um, if you want to repeat a print in multiple pieces of your English paper piecing, for example, this is a great um, example of fussy cutting because the same portion of the fabric is taken for each segment and um, it re really makes a beautiful finished project, I think. Okay, so let me skip over some of the techniques um, and show you show you the projects okay so this is a doll quilt that uses um, what ends up being heart-shaped pieces and lovely photos in the book uh, lovely step photos as well this is a really beautiful bound project folder and I like the clear vinyl on the insides as well and the zippered portions Again, just really cute, really, really cute projects in this book. A candle mat, so this is my ultimate favorite out of the whole book, and the one I will definitely make first. I especially love the bound curves, and I like that there's not a huge amount of pieces to the block, so here's the, the pieces right there, and here's that fussy cutting that I was talking about a second ago. I really love that. I skipped over one. Um, the dumpling bag is also super adorable and I like that it's sort of expandable. I don't know if you can see the pop of the background fabric over here, but love that. There's another picture of the dumpling bag. And here's the English paper piecing around the front of it. Hand towels, bath and hand towels, which look like really cute and quick projects. Oh, and here's a bag, Little Miss Sweetness bag. Oh, that's so funny that that's the name of that bag. That would be a great bag for a toddler or a little girl. Okay, a, a doll with a little bit of English paper piecing on the dress. And those mice are awfully cute too. Mummy Rosie and Miss Lucy, the mouse pin cushion. <laughs> I 
Okay, this next project is a pretty clamshell tissue cover. Next one is pretty little, little flower tape measuring cover. I could use one of those. That looks really cute. Springtime embroidery organizer. So as you can see, lots of little small and fast projects. Here's a quilt, but it's a baby quilt, so it's a smaller quilt. This one measures 30 inches by 35 inches by 40 inches. And there's the full quilt. Again, with the bound rounded edges. Some placemats. Those look like they're quick to put together. And here's the full image of the placemat. Pin cushions. I could see a lot of these being really cute for someone who sews as a gift for the holidays. A mini quilt. This one's 12 inches by 12 and a half inches, so on the small side. Vintage Dreams cushion. A gift bag. And then all the templates are in the back of the book. So again, this book is called A Stitch in Time English Paper Piecing. The author is Sharon Burgess. And there's a link in the description if you're interested in picking up that book and adding it to your sewing room stash. All right, so now I'd like to invite Michelle and Bronwyn onto the show with us live. Michelle and Bronwyn hosted the Tudor Bag So Long that we had in the Facebook group this past few weeks. So welcome ladies. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. Hello. Hello. Okay, so before we show off some pictures and announce some prize winners, randomly drawn prizes, I'd like to ask both of you, what was your favorite thing about hosting the Sew Along? So we'll, we'll start with Michelle. Oh, geez. Um, I think it was really getting to know more members of the community. Um, I think I enjoyed the pay that we chose. Um, just getting to make a bag, not by yourself. You felt like you were doing it with other people. So it kept you moving along and motivated, you know, where sometimes you start so many different projects and then this kind of forced you to finish it in a mm -hmm. time frame, right? And yeah. not just have a bit of UFOs. What about you, Bronwyn? What was your favorite thing about hosting? I think the favorite thing for me hosting was the number of people who said, thank you so much. If it wasn't for you, I never would have made this bag, finished this bag, that um, Michelle and I kept them on task, kept them to um, each week with our weekly um, uh, uh, tasks, and that they were actually able, some people completing their first bag. I mean, that was really cool. Yeah. be able to be a part of it. And I liked also that there was a learning aspect. You had different things uh, to help people kind of make little modifications to their bags. So I really liked that a lot too. Yeah, sharing some tips and tricks with others that they may not know, right? Yeah. Teaching. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. All right, so Michelle and Bronwyn chose an assortment of photos and these are not winners or the best of the bunch we just um, wanted to showcase because there were so many finished bags I think Bronwyn said before the show 206 people so far finished their Tudor bags as part of the sew along 207 wow that's a huge number so again these are just a selection of the Tudor bags finished uh, we wanted to showcase different features of the bags, and so Danny's going to put the photographs on the screen right now. Oops, wrong oh, photograph. Wrong one. My bad. <laughs> All right, this first one was made by James Patrick, and the fabric is really cute with the macaron cookies. Another one uh, that features weaving, this one was made by Haliza. Kathy Wilson made this one, and she quilted it, and it kind of mirrored the Eiffel Tower. This amazing Wonder Woman bag was made by Heather Seth. Another quilted bag, this one was made by Tina George. And next up, this Little Mermaid version made by Katie. This one's adorable, I love this one. This red and black floral was made by Catherine Mald Maldonado. This adorable dog print bag made by Leslie McDonald. 
Mario and uh, Donkey Kong by Amanda Park. Bronwyn made this tulip pink uh, Prince Charming frog version with the Bellevue pouch. Michelle made this glittery spider version with the side pockets. The Santa Claus Tudor bag made by Deb Minter. And then finally one made in tulip pink Eden fabrics. This one was made by Connie Handel. So again, I wish we could share all of the bags, but amazing finishes. I invite you to, after the show, there's a link in the description linking to the album for the Tudor bag sew along, all the finishes. Check out all the finished bags because there's amazing, amazing bags in the album. All right, so again, thank you both to uh, for co-hosting the sew along and we want to announce some randomly drawn winners from all of those ladies and bag dudes who finish their Tudor, tutor bags. Okay, Bron yes. Bronwyn. So I, yep, so I need either you or Danny to okay. give me a random number. I had 207 people okay. who completed their two and okay. random number, you don't know what number is what, so you pick a number and that person's won Minikin season two. Okay, Danny chose the first yep. number, it's number 30. Number 30 is, oh, hold on, my spreadsheet skipped. Number 30 is Kathy Holzapfel Wilson. Congratulations, Kathy. Kathy. Um, the prizes are going to be Minikin season two bundles, so congratulations. All right, next winner, Danny's drawing. Oh Number God, one, winner. 108. 108 is, uh, congratulations to Karen Britton. Congratulations, Karen. Karen Britton was the second winner. And if all the winners could email me after the show or when you see this, um, and I'll be recording your contact information so I can email you again after Minikin season two comes out. All right, one more winner, Danny. All right, 68. 68, I'm so excited, and I'm not even in the draw. 68. <laughs> and, oh, I, do, I do apologize in advance for this pronunciation. So you know it's not an easy name. 68 goes to Haliza Mushaira Maud Yusuf. I think like, yeah. that was Haliza's bag that we showed, the second the second yes. one. So congratulations, we Haliza. Wow. That's well awesome. Done. So big congratulations Yay. to everyone that participated. I think having a beautiful beautifully finished bag and Michelle mentioned a lot of the bags were from first time bag makers. So that's an amazing feat and um, congratulations to everybody that participated. Right yep, that's Haliza's bag. Um, so in wrapping up the Tudor bag sew along, um, do you have any, maybe a sneak peek that you could give us? Is there something else that you're working on behind the scenes perhaps? <laughs> I like your motion graphics, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our next so long it's going to start tomorrow so we're going to start so it's the dot dot dash when and i both wanted to make the dot dot dash and we thought we'd have everybody join us and make it as well this is going to be a three week so long so fairly quick we'll be done early enough before christmas not here with anybody's you know christmas making uh, it's going to be very quick, very easy, and we're choosing to do the small rather than the large, but anybody who would like to make the large, they're definitely more than welcome to make it. Um, we promise we will do another sew along in the new year. We haven't thought that far ahead, but we do <laughs> promise to do one. another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bronwyn. <laughs> 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 uh, we're very excited so I'll post the document tonight with all the information again it's going to be basically the same thing as the tutor post your, ba your bag your completed photo in the correct album same thing as last time it's just the dot dot dash we're doing now okay awesome and three weeks thank you so much to both of you I know it's there's a ton a of work oh Danny says there's a question we're gonna pop it on the screen 
Susan says, how do you join? Does it cost money? Well, it costs, you oh. need to buy the pattern. Pay directly to Bronwyn. <laughs> and <show>. Danny's kidding. <laughs> we will take any chocolate you want to send us. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't have to give us money. We'll take gifts. That's fine. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no money. You just um, get the next week is all about getting supplies, right? So you just need to get yep. by the pattern. If you bought the four pack, you're already sorted. You've got the pattern and you've got the video. If not, you need to go to Thanks Glum. You need to go and <laughs> buy the pattern, get your supplies, and then a, in a Week's time, we'll start with week one. Okay. And that's just the and, and I just want to say, I think everyone did an excellent job on their tutor bags. So are, I think everybody's bag, when we were going through, it was, I felt, it's really hard to choose, but they were all wonderfully done. They're all beautiful, and you all knocked it out of the park. You all did an incredible job, and you all... You know, no matter what your skill level is, I think you all deserve a huge round of applause. And it, I can't wait to see your dot, dot, dashes. I think there's just, you guys are going to take it to the next level. It's going to be awesome. I think they'll be dot, dot, dashing. <laughs> there we go. So Melby had a question. Um, how long do I have to make it? The dot, dot, dash so along is going to go for three weeks. So this week coming is going to be about getting your supplies and everything you need and then the cutting and fusing will go the next week and then two more weeks after that and that takes us to I'm using my mouse and I don't need it um, I believe it'll finish December 12th if I'm doing it correct if I'm looking correctly at the uh, actually you know what I can pull it up here so the dot dot dash so along the it will end sorry not December uh, the last week will be November 12th to the 18th okay and you just join on the so sweetness sewing patterns page there's nothing to join nothing to sign up <sighs> sorry <laughs> excuse the rude cat <laughs> nothing to join nothing to sew you just go onto the page just look for posts from Bronwyn and I and that that's it. The announcement section, the file section, or I'll be post album. Yep. So that's in the So Sweetness Facebook group. Um, there's a link in the description if you're not already a member of the group, and you can join. You just request um, to join the group. We'll approve you, and you'll find all the information within the group. All right. Super exciting news. Thank you again so much for doing another sew along on top of the tutor bag, and I'm excited to see all the dot dot dash bags come in. All right. You're Very excited. Bye, You're welcome. ladies. So we'll post um, information in the Facebook group. Will be posted tomorrow morning for the prep work for the dot dot dash bag sew along. In case you're interested in participating in that, and you can join at any time. So if if you don't have time to join right away, if you want to join in a week or two, um, that's completely fine. The information will be in the Facebook group whenever you're ready. So. Um, I'd like to invite you now, if you enjoy our live videos, if you're watching on Facebook, to go ahead and hit the share button. Share this sewing video with your other sewing friends. Regardless, um, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you could at least humor us and hit the like button, which looks like a little picture of a thumbs up. So your likes and shares help us out so much because Facebook and YouTube look very kindly on the likes and shares and they consider sharing our videos with other people that have similar interests in regards to sewing but might not have seen our videos before so thank you so much for doing that we really 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 appreciate it so hopefully next Sunday um, at least by the following Tuesday we will have a trailer to show you all of the projects in Minikin season 2 so there's 13 brand new projects 13 videos will accompany these projects and we've been working really hard these past few weeks and actually I started working on Minikin season two, um, writing the, the new patterns in January. So it's been 10 months of work and I'm really excited um, to share that work with you. And just, um, I think Michelle said 10 more days. So October 31st is when Minikin season two comes out. Um, Audrey says, thanks Michelle and Bronwyn. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, each one of you, um, even just being part of our chats, being part of the community on Facebook, it really, uh, our 
our community and our group could not be anything if it wasn't for the quality of our members. So we really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to announce uh, the giveaway winner from last week. Uh, this winner will be winning a Minikin Season 2 bundle, which, which is coming out on October 31st. And that winner was Knit Stricken Erica. So congratulations to Erica. I've already contacted Erica on social media and I noticed in my email inbox that I have an email back from Erica with her contact information. So um, congratulations again for entering. So if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. I'm going to be answering some questions live. So either sewing related questions, bag making related questions, questions about a sewing notion or tool, feel free to ask me in the comments and um, I'll answer some questions live. And stay tuned. At the end, we have another giveaway for Minikin Season 2. So we have another giveaway tonight. We have another one next week um, and then Minikin Season 2 will be out. So really looking forward to that. All right. Um, yeah, some, some amazing bags being posted uh, in that Tudor Bag Sew Along um, Sorry, Facebook album. Sorry, what was the question, Danny? I want to see the picture of your bag, so I read things. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is the upcoming Sew Along. This is the dot, dot, dash bag, the small version, which is um, with the one Bronwyn and Michelle have chosen for the Sew Along is the blue one on the left. Of course, you can make the large version as well, and that was the pink one with the cats on it. All right. Waiting for questions? Yes, I'm waiting for questions, Danny. <laughs> Give me some good questions. Uh, Mary says, what would be the best bag for a small crossbody bag for a six-year-old? Um, let me see. Which one, Danny, do you think Violet would have liked when she was smaller? Violet pilfers so many of my bags. Baker Street or Oreo? Um, yeah, the Baker Street bag would be a good one. The Baker Street bag is a free pattern and video. The Oreo bag, the small version which is behind me. This is also a free pattern and video. You can find this on my YouTube channel. Um, this one would be really cute for a, a smaller child as well. Let me stick this one back up here. I've also seen people make the cotton candy uh, pouch into a bag. So this is the medium cotton candy pouch. Um, and I also have a video tutorial on the YouTube channel about adding a side strap to a bag. And this one would be really cute as a bag for a small child. A lady and her daughter went to a wedding on Sunday and they both had the cotton candy. I saw purses. that in the Facebook group, yep. Um, Dorothy said, can regular zippers be used for the dot dot dash bag? Yes, you can use regular number three dress skirt zippers if you'd like uh, for the front zipper as well as the one on the top. And that's actually what I use for my bag. Melissa also wanted to know where this, the width of the zippers you carry in the store. Okay, that's a good question. Um, Danny said Melissa had a question for me also. Yes, way early. Um, the width of the zippers that I sell in my shop. So uh, at SoSweetness.com, we sell handbag zippers, and the width of the zipper tape is um, one and a quarter of an inch, if that helps. All right, Grace says, how would you interface a vinyl or a cork bag? So let me pull one out um, just so I can reference it. So if you were using cork for the straps or accents um, on a cork bag, so the white over here is cork, I did not use any interfacing for the accents or for the straps. However, if you were using cork for the body of the bag, so for instance, if you were instead going to use cork for this red portion of the bag, I would suggest using the same interfacing as called for in the pattern, or at least that's what I would do, um, just to give the bag the structure still. But I, I feel pretty confident cutting the accents and straps raw and having no interfacing just because cork is more substantial. And the same could go for leather or vinyl as well. Jennifer says, if I wanted a two inch wide strap, how, w how wide do I need to cut the fabric? So that depends on what type of fabric you're using and how you're completing the strap. So if you're using quilting cotton and you'll be pressing it kind of like double fold bias tape, so that means in toward the center opening the fabric out and then pressing in toward the center crease and refolding. That's kind of what I mean by double fold bias tape. If you need a two inch wide finish strap, you'll just multiply that by four since you're pressing it kind of like into four layers. So that would be eight inches for that two inch wide strap. If you're making your strap with a uh, fabric that you're cutting raw like cork or leather, like what I did on that red renegade bag, um, you can just cut it four inches wide since you'll be just uh, folding the fabric in half for that two inch wide strap once in half. So that's uh, two suggestions for making your strap. Um, quilting cotton, cut it eight inches wide for a two inch finished strap. And for cork or leather, just for the two layers, you can cut it four inches wide. Kathy says, can you use fusible fleece 
um, on pleather with a pressing cloth. So I always recommend testing on a small area of the fabric first. And what that means is you can just cut a little corner of the pleather away and cut the same size um, as, as your fusible fleece and then use a pressing cloth to press it and see um, what the finished product looks like. If it looks okay, you're, you're good to go in attaching that to the pleather. Um, I've gently ironed on the wrong side of my pleather or vinyl before uh, with or without a pressing cloth and I've had good luck, but again, the best advice is always to test a small area first just to make sure you're getting the results that you want. Deanie says, do you ever put made by labels in your bags? Would you put it on the outside or the inside of the bag? So I don't, I don't a lot just because I am not selling my bags and they usually don't leave my house. I have this Baker Street bag that I made with, this is a handmade tag and it's installed actually the same way that magnetic snaps are. So there's two prongs and it goes through the wrong side of the fabric and there's a washer behind it also. Some people have um, branded or handmade personalized tags made. You can even hand write a tag like people do with quilt labels. Um, Modern Yardage, I believe, is a good company where you can have custom labels printed, uh, either quilt labels or you can design your own fabric. Spoonflower, you can also um, have printed um, personalized fabric and that's another good one for making personalized labels. Um, the Dutch Label Company is another company that pr prints um, hand printed labels or hand woven fables labels um, kind of like a uh, grow grain ribbon if you'd like your label to look like that so there's a lot of options um, I'll, I'll leave myself a note to talk about all of those options for personalizing or branding your bags I'll, I'll talk about that on a, a future social Sunday show Stephanie says what house are you in Gryffindor um, Gryffindor is my favorite Danny does have a Slytherin uh, hoodie that we bought when we went to Universal Studios. What was it last year, Danny? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's one of his favorite hoodies. Um, yeah, but I'm personally Gryffindor for me. Doreen says, how did you stop the sewing interfacing from wrinkling when sewing it to the fabric? Um, so most of the, f the interfacing that I use is sewing because I use by any soft and stable foam interfacing, which is a sewing interfacing. My personal preference is that I like to first iron the fabric and then I iron the fabric additionally on top of the foam. Even though my foam interfacing is a sew-in foam, um, the fabric layers on the top and bottom of the foam interfacing have sort of a nap to them. So my fabric when ironed on top kind of temporarily, I don't want to say sticks, but it's kind of like static cling. Um, you know, when you take stuff out of the dryer, when it kind of temporarily sticks together, it's kind of like that. So it sticks just long enough for me to get some wonder clips on the edges and get it over to the sewing machine and basted. And then I usually like to iron it again once I've basted it just to make sure it's really smooth. So the wonder clips are definitely really important in keeping those edges taut before you get it over to the sewing machine. Because if you have any excess fabric in the middle, of your pattern piece before you baste it in place, then when, once you've basted it, it'll also look wrinkly and have that excess fabric in the middle. So keeping everything taut and pulled apart with the wonder clips, definitely very helpful in that process. Elisa says the Polaris bag is a great children's bag. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that one. The Polaris bag is a great child's bag. It's a great smaller size and it also comes in the two different style options. There's an oval, oval sized Polaris bag and there's also one that's shaped like a rectangle. Linda says, uh, Wonder Label is good. Oh, I, I'm not familiar with that company, but I'll, I'll look into that one as well. Let me write myself a note because I'm super forgetful sometimes. Wonder Label. Um, Diane says, you can also use tool tape to make labels. I'm working on using my embroidery machine to create my own labels. Oh, that's a good one too. Let me write that one down. Embroidery, okay. Uh, Lisa says, can you repeat the two names for personalized labels? Um, Dutch Label Company is the website. Um, Spoonflower or Mar Modern Yardage, I also mentioned those two because are, those are two websites where you can um, make designs on the computer and have them custom printed on Spoonflower or, or Modern Yardage or you can purchase uh, pre-designed fabrics and I'm sure there's probably quilt labels um, or uh, bag label designs on there. I know there's designs for particular things like tea towels and things like that so I'm sure there's um, pre-designed designs for uh, quilt or bag labels. Roxanne says, how thick was the foam board that you showed for a firm bottom in a bag? Um, that's a good question. I, d I don't have it 
within reach over here, but I think it was approximately a quarter of an inch. It might have been a little bit thick, thinner than that. Um, so foam core board or um, plastic, corrugated plastic are really good for um, firm bottoms or false bottoms. And I showed that corrugated plastic on last Sunday's show in case you're curious about what that looks like. Nancy says, Wonder Label is a great place for personalized labels. I use them. They are professional and fast. Thanks for the website for that one as well. I'm writing that one down too. Um, Dini says, I notice when ironing fabric, sometimes a crease just won't come out. Would a different iron make a difference? Maybe a different ironer. Um, so the iron that I personally use is the Singer Expert Finished Iron. I've been using the same iron since 2013. Um, I previously had a different iron, but it was constantly constantly leaking on me. Um, a starch spray or this is the spray that I use when I'm ironing my fabric before I attach it to the interfacing. It's called Flatter. It comes in different scents and also unscented if you prefer unscented. It's a st starch alternative spray. Um, you can also keep a, a, just a regular spray bottle filled with water near your sewing machine for um, that same purpose as well. I just spray my fabric. I especially concentrate on the areas where I can see creases or um, wrinkles. And um, then I iron it. I use some steam. That usually does the trick. Um, I find that canvas fabric is usually the most difficult to get the creases out. But um, again, the flatter spray or another starch spray or even water um, will be fine for that. Manuela says, how do you iron a finished bag? I seem to have a hard time figuring that out. So there's a few methods. Let me grab a bag just so that I can uh, show you. I got one right here. And I'm gonna grab my Wonder Clips and Danny's, yep, thank you, Danny. Danny took that off the screen, okay. So in my bags, I usually like to pinch, depending on the shape of the finished bag, I usually like to pinch all of the areas, like here's the bottom panel and here's the front of the bag. So I just pinched it, move my outline. I'll lean it on the ironing board and then glide my iron and I'll, I'll work around the entire bag. So, oh, sorry, that was, like sorry, that was my microphone. <laughs> um, I'll just work around the entire bag, repeating the same process. If you don't feel like that whole ironing process, or if you're working with materials like cork or leather that you don't want to iron on, you can just go ahead and put wonder clips on all areas of the bag for an hour or two. So in this example, I'm just going to put wonder clips on all the seams for an hour or two. And the reason why this especially works for bags where you've used cork or vinyl, because um, you can't iron on them, but you still want them to have a crisp finish. So I would just leave all of these clips on the bag for a couple hours or even overnight. And then the next day when you take the clips off, you'll see the imprints for a few minutes, but the imprints will go away over time and then your bag will have a nice crisp, nice crisp finish on all of the edges because ironing and pressing the bag when it's finished makes a huge difference in how the bag looks as far as crisp, crispness and professional looking. Glum says, for creases that won't come out, you can use the Clover fabric folding pen or just mix a little fabric softener into some water and put that on the crease, iron, and it should come right out. Oh, that's a great tip. I do have that Clover fabric folding pen, but I didn't know that about the fabric softener. That's a really great tip. We don't normally use fabric softener, but maybe I'll get a little sample of some just so that I can use it for really hard to get, on, get out wrinkles like I mentioned on that canvas fabric. All right, Danny's calling on the questions for tonight. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't get all of, all of the questions live, uh, but we will be answering more questions on our Tuesday show, Ask Sarah, which is at 7 p.m. Central Time this Tuesday. All right, so I have another giveaway for Minikin Season 2. One lucky winner, randomly drawn winner, will win um, the bundle that's coming out October 31st. Um, so my question for you, all you have to do is let me know in the comments and I will choose the winner out of all of those who answer my question. So my question was, what was your first job? I know this is not sewing related, but I like learning new things about other people in the group. Um, my first job was working at a dog boarding and grooming kennel. I worked there for about three years, starting when I was 15, and we had a huge amount of dogs come in through the kennel. So especially on holidays, like Christmas or Thanksgiving, when people would go out of town, we'd have to up to 300 dogs in the kennel and I got to see basically every breed of dog and we had cats there as well. Um, so I thought it was really awesome to get experience with different breeds of dogs and we did things like, um, it was called playtime. So we, we would give the dogs walks. Um, uh, my friend and I both worked there. 
We walked the dogs so they could come out of the kennel for a little while. We learned how to bathe and groom dogs, uh, simple grooming so we didn't give haircuts, but we bathed them and groomed them. We learned to give medicine, which was really tricky for certain dogs because I remember that there was this little toy poodle that came in there once in a while and she had epilepsy, so she really it was really important for her to get her medication, but not every dog will take medication in a little treat. Some of the dogs uh, very quickly spit the treats out with the medicine, which they needed to take, and so we got really good at um, the doing things to trick them, like you know, putting the pill in their mouth, holding it closed, massaging their throat gently so they it would induce them to swallow, um, things like that. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments, what was your first job? Um, that was mine, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other answers. So this has been Social Sunday. I'm so happy you spent your Sunday with me, or during the week if you're watching our recording. I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Have a great week, and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.